Welcome back to Little Sneakers, baby. Hello. I'm Michael Rainey. Cal um, Donjala. Conjal Dabala. Come on, dog. You left, know we only do left, left here, Jake. man. Me and bike. Yeah. Me and bike Rainey. <laughs> Jake Matera, how are you, buddy? Meow. <laughs> you a freak, dog. <laughs> you a certified freak over there. Damn, man. Damn, Jake's over there with his fucking shoes off, sipping an iced coffee like he's running Ooh. a goddamn romance novel club. <laughs> you fucking weirdo. <laughs> It's a it's a murder mystery. The, uh, yeah. The husband does it. <laughs> uh well boys, as always, we gotta decide whether or not we're gonna do a impractical jokers <laughs> All right. or little stinkers podcast. All right. Time I brought uh, John, I'm 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 pulling for you one of these times. I'm fully I prepared think- to unload with an impractical jokers themed podcast if necessary. However, I really want to do a little stinkers. All right. Well I'm I think I might get lucky. I brought my lucky coin today. (laughs) (laughs) Now, what makes these lucky? This is the lucky one. All right. Why is it lucky? (laughs) I just do. Come on, man. I was drunk last night and I put six dollars and quarters in my fucking fanny pack. (laughs) How'd the bit go? It was a good. Yeah, it was great, man. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are going to fall out on that one. (laughs) All right, heads. All right, your stinker. Mm-hmm. Tails, my joker. Yeah. Stinker. Oh, all right. Live, live to tell another story. All right. Well, I, I just want to apologize to you because I know you had your heart set on impractical jokers again. <laughs> always do. But, but you always teach me something valuable. Oh, thank you, man, dude. I cannot wait for when we get to that impractical jokers episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be tough to pick who we talk about. You do them all, dude. I, I, we could sit here all night when that day comes. An hour per Joker. An hour per Mur. <laughs> <laughs> well, who you got for us this week? All right. Well, before I, I'm not going to flat out tell you like I normally tell you. I'd rather try Ooh. to paint a picture first. Okay. Jake, John, would you please humor me and close your eyes while I do this? Absolutely. Let me know when you're ready. Don't open them until I tell you. I'm ready. ready? I'm ready, sir. All right, boys. So picture the both of yourselves sitting in a a beautiful den smack dab in the middle of Beverly Hills, California. You spent the evening watching movies, (laughs) eating strawberries and cream, (laughs) snuggled up next to one another. Just enjoying one another's company and just winding down on the summer. <laughs> Might be hot outside, but it's nice and cool inside. Can't get better, can it? Can no, it? Nothing's better than eating strawberries and cream with John. That's Snuggled sure. up with Jake. Yeah, that's where I want to be. <laughs> You're right. It can't get better. Matter of fact, it can, can only get worse. Still closed? Are your eyes still closed, Jake? <laughs> yeah, mine are. All right. Matter of fact, it can only get worse from there. Oh, God, Do I you hope... boys want to guess why it can only get worse? <laughs> well, I hope you don't have a gun right now. Oh, my God, dude. I'm so fucking scared. Do you want to know why it can only get worse? Why can't it only get worse? <laughs> because you are Kitty and Lyle Menendez, and I'm the fucking Menendez brothers, bitch! <laughs> I fucking hate you, Dad. <laughs> He's taking him so long to load it. You shot me in one of my chins. <laughs> Did you fucking buy this shit for that? Yeah, dickhead. What do you think? You think I normally got fucking kid shotguns laying around the house? I don't know what the fuck. There's a dog mask hanging up right there. <laughs> Is this supposed to be one of the Menendez brothers' haircuts? Uh, Lyle Menendez was forced to wear a hairpiece by his father from the age of 14. (laughs) Are you fucking serious? Dude, that is is incredible. Oh, man, that had some serious Donald Duck aggression coming out. (laughs) That's what you get, motherfuckers. really upset after last episode. (laughs) Oh my god Alright Please so, keep that on For the whole episode yeah. Alright go back to me I'll put it back on I can't wait till he hog ties should be to your left <laughs> Alright Looks like a merkin So yeah dude We're doing the fucking Menendez brothers Again I don't know shit about them I'm thrilled Jake what do you know About the Menendez boys uh, I know I think they killed their parents mm-hmm. um, 
And then, like, I heard some chilling shit after the fact. Like, they went out afterwards and were like, there's pictures of that stuff later on. That's all I know. They ball the fuck out, baby. Yeah. And oh. uh, Cable Guy. That's probably the ex- yes. the only thing I know about that. Dude, that impression that, that fucking uh, Ben Stiller did in the Cable Guy was not far off from the of actual the trial footage. The call and then the actual testimony. Really? All right. <laughs> and much like Casey Anthony. <laughs> I'm you in don't love. Have to wear it. <laughs> I'm in love with them. <laughs> and two, I'm not convinced they should have been convicted of murder. Damn, so they were fucking convicted of murder. They were convicted, and they're currently serving life in prison. Whoa. Yep. All right. So we're gonna backtrack a little yeah, bit because yeah. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But again, part of the joy in delving into these fucking people is that, man, I, I get fucking spun right around a lot of these times. And this was just like Casey Anthony all over again, dude. I'm not convinced they should still be in jail. Wow. Because it's been 31 years since these That's motherfuckers got locked crazy. up. crazy. People get way less than that for killing people. I know, dude. How they, old were they? They were 18 and 21. All right. So Lyle's the older brother. So he was 21 when, the, when they committed the murder, when they committed the killings. And then Eric was 18 when it happened. All right. So we'll get to the night of the murder in a little yeah. bit. But first, I kind of want to give some background as to who their parents were, because not only being the parents are the clear victims of these two brothers and what they did. But, man, you get to see exactly how much they played in influencing them to eventually do these things. Like you're saying they fucking beat them and stuff or it was fucked bad, up, man. It people. was fucked up. At the very least, they were verbally abusive. At their worst, there was sexual abuse. Whoa. So, I mean, like with most sexual abuse cases, it's hard to substantiate that. So you just got to take people at their word. Mm -hmm. But with all the shit that lines up according to their father, especially their father, Jose Menendez's behavior, I'm inclined to think that there's at least a decent chance that it may have happened. So fucking uh, Jose Menendez... (laughs) I was born in 1944 in Cuba. Do you have a single flower for me to put in that? Oh, dude, I got roses out there, man. Yeah. Uh, if it makes any of you more comfortable to hold this, please go for it. <laughs> so just let me know, Let's man. Start a timer, 20 minutes each. <laughs> All right. So fucking uh, Jose was born uh, May 6, 1944 in Cuba. Okay. And he was born to a really nice family. His dad used to be a professional soccer player. His mom was a swimmer who was so accomplished, she ended up in the Cuban Sports Hall of Fame. Damn. And then the dad ended up starting his own accounting business, which became extremely, extremely, um, uh, really pop. I don't know, pop, if you could say popular for it. Was fucking, successful. It was successful, yeah. Before he moved to America. Before he moved to America. Yeah. Now, uh, in 1959, the Cuban Revolution started. And at that point, all the, all the fucking wealth that his family had accumulated, all their shit got taken. Damn. So and they had to flee. They were refugees at that point, right? They didn't have well, they didn't have to. And, you know, Lyle and Eric and rightfully so get painted as fucking bitch, baby, fucking billionaire playboys. Yeah, yeah. But you see that Lyle was actually one of those, too. I don't know if his family was fucking millionaires, but he didn't need anything. He didn't want anything. They just gave him whatever the fuck he wanted because they had it. But then when the Cuban Revolution hit in uh, 1959, they uh um, Jose was just like, all right, fuck this shit. By 1960, he he devised a plan to get the fuck out of there. So he was 16 at that point. And he went to stay with a cousin pretty close by to here in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, his, his The rest of his family still stayed there. Do you know how he got from Cuba to the States? I believe he flew with his uh, sister's fiance. Okay. And they're people of means, so it's probably easier. For yeah, them to it was fly. easy for them to get the fuck There's out. There's no way they were taking a fucking a raft. They weren't. They weren't too. fucking jet skiing over. You know. <laughs> so so um, he gets the fucking Hazelton, and he fucking crushes it. Um, he's just he's an overachiever from the start, and when he gets to high school, he's a popular kid. He's a handsome fucking guy, and his big thing was swimming. Like he fucking crushed it at swimming. I found I, I found uh, an article online which showed that one of his former classmates spoke highly of him and he had two nicknames, which most people knew him by. You want to take a guess using the information that I've given you thus far as to what uh, those two nicknames were? La, el hombre de agua. 
not far off. Damn. Jake, you want to take one? Mine's not. The mine's far off. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was the breaststroke. The breaststroker. <laughs> no, never mind. All right, so I'll give you the first en one. Espanol, por favor. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was swimming based. He was known. I don't know if he was known, but he wanted people to know him as. He picked his own nickname? I believe so. Oh, I dude. cannot imagine dude. anybody giving him this fucking nickname. <laughs> this sounds like the fucking nickname that a fucking raging narcissist would give himself. Yeah. Um, the Mightiest Merman. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> yeah, nobody's fucking class, man. He's like, you know what you are? You're the Mightiest Merman. <laughs> oh, shit. I know that ain't the Mightiest Merman coming into Spanish. <laughs> Acting like he coaches. <laughs> Dude, um, when I worked at a bingo hall when I was in high school, this elderly black woman used to buy um, these bingo cards called jackpots off of me. And anytime I would walk up to her, her table, she would say, oh, look who it is coming up in here acting like he coaches. <laughs> It's like, who the fuck is coaches? That's amazing. Native American uh, chief, I believe. Yeah. Okay. And then when I would walk, then... Um, she would uh, one time she asked me to walk in it, walk away in a different direction than I originally walked. And I said, why? She's like, I want to see that wiggle in your walk. I knew it. Yeah, she was she was hitting me up, man. <laughs> Felt like the mightiest merman. <laughs> All right. Well, that nickname that's fucking one. blows. <laughs> <laughs> so he had one other one. It was relative to where he came from. Want to guess it? El hombre de Havana. Uh, <laughs> switched out one word. <laughs> You're like doing like Breaking Bad episode titles. <laughs> uh, is it uh, the Cuban refugee? <laughs> the Cuban Casanova. Oh, that's nice. a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, so you could get why a person could arrive at that, whereas fucking mightiest merman is a little. Yeah. I'm it asking people cool. to stop yeah. calling me the mightiest merman. <laughs> Please call me. My father was the mightiest merman. Please call me <laughs> Cuban Casanova. <laughs> so he crushed it pretty hard in high school. And then he got a scholarship to Southern Illinois University. And when he got to Southern Illinois University, he met a lovely young lady named Mary, who was also known as Kitty. Do you want to know why they called her Kitty? Because she didn't eat her own pussy. No. <laughs> <laughs> she had her ribs removed. <laughs> she had her ribs removed so she could suck his dick. <laughs> Wasn't a very smart woman. <laughs> I don't know why they fucking called her. Apparently. <laughs> you were going to make me guess and you didn't. <laughs> so she could suck the nine lives on that plane that came over. <laughs> but one of her brothers said that he thinks they started calling her Kitty because one one day he opened the back door to call her in for dinner and said, here, kitty, 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 kitty. And he thinks that that's why, that's why it's stuck. stuck. Yeah. But she did all right in school. She eventually became a teacher. And he was killing it in high school, killing it throughout college. And then he, they left Southern Illinois University and they moved to New York City. And he finished his degree at Queens College and he became an accountant. At this point, like, she had become a teacher for a little bit, but then she wasn't doing that fucking shit anymore. So once they got to New York, they had Lyle. And the 70s? Yeah, this was the 70s. So it was he was pretty young. I think they got married when Jose was fucking 19. I don't want to jump ahead, but what uh, year were the murders? So the murders were in 19, it happened August 20th, 1989. 89. Oh, my God. Way earlier than yeah. I thought. Okay. So it would have been 67, I think. That he was born. When, I, when Lyle was born. Okay. Okay. So they're in New York City at this point, And then he's crushing it. And then he gets to a point where he's accounting. And he's accounting for a company called Cooper's Library. And they're so impressed with his, his work ethic that they fucking promote him to a title called Comptroller. I'm aware of that. That is a uh, something you'd vote on. Or like you run for Comptroller, I think. I, I don't in know like a small town or something. Yeah, I don't know how it fucking happens, but like he eventually became the comptroller. So that's so he was like accounting. Well, I think known. accounting is more like you're just analyzing finances, whereas comptroller, like you, you're kind of a shot caller in regards to where the money goes. Gotcha. That's okay, my interpretation. Okay. I'm a retard, so please <laughs> don't listen to a thing I say. I, I'm looking at the wig. I can see. <laughs> 
take me seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you are listening on iTunes, please do yourself a favor and just look at the YouTube so you can see what Mike looks like right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, after becoming comptroller, three years later, he later he gets named president of the fucking company. Wow, God damn, he is fucking on fire. All right. So shortly thereafter, um, at this point, we're at a uh, nineteen seventy nine. He becomes the fucking executive vice president of operations for Hertz, the car rental company. Mm -hmm. One very interesting fact that I found out about his time as executive vice president of operations at Hertz. They had a very special dinner guest at the Menendez household during his time at Hertz. Jake, you want to guess yes. as to who it was? Is it OJ Simpson? It's none other than OJ Simpson had dinner with the fucking Menendez family. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> Snicker crossover episode. <laughs> Is that was uh was uh the juice involved in Hertz? Do I, do yeah, I he was the pitch man. He yeah, was, yeah, yeah, he was like running through the airport, Holy jumping shit. over yeah. yeah, uh cripples and suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so he's crushing it at Hertz, but again, like he doesn't stay long there because like his ascent through any fucking job he has is, is mediocre. Right to the top. Dude, what, what was his title you said? He was executive uh vice president of operations at Hertz. Did he ever th Ask them to change it to Mightiest Merman by chance. <laughs> <laughs> he could have. When we do uh, Menendez Brothers Revisited, I'm going to look into that for you. Can you put me on the phone with the Mightiest Merman, please? <laughs> uh, can I just call him the Mighty Er Merman? I want to have a word with him. <laughs> but this was 1979 where he got this title. Dude, and by 1990, um, Hertz is a is a subsidiary of RCA, the like record company. Yep. Wow. And by 1980, um, he was tapped to take on an executive position at RCA Music. Whoa. Yeah, dude. And he wasn't That's like going from fucking NBC page to dog top of Comcast, right? Incredible, dude. Like he's fucking crushing it, and he gets to a point where he's um he's. I don't know if he's entirely responsible, but he's at least partly credited with signing people like uh, Duran Duran and the Eurythmics. So Man. he's an influ influential guy within this company. Wow. So that's 1980. And uh, 1986, he leaves RCA to go to uh, a company called Carolco Pictures. And Carolco, Carolco um, distributed the Rambo movies. Rainbow movies. Rambo. Oh, the Rainbow movies. Yeah, yeah. The, the fucking Rainbow movies. Yes, dude. Uh, uh, yeah, the fucking like Care Bears, down. dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking know where you are, Let asshole. Let me hold that gun. Let me hold that. <laughs> Keep that thing. I'm about to let the chopper <laughs> sing in this bitch. <laughs> <clears throat> so, during the... Now, during this time, like, up until uh, 1986, like, he leaves... RCA for Carol Crow. And during this time, up until 1986, they're living in Jersey. And Lyle and Eric spend the bulk of their lives, the, the, the bulk of their youth in New Jersey. And they're being little stinkers, dude. Yeah. They're spoiled, fucking rotten rich kids. Yeah. I mean, they're fucking loaded at this point, right? This dude's dude, fucking. It's off the charts. The CEO of every company he touches, basically. Incredible. Yeah. I, I know when he, when he fucking, when he went to RCA, I think the figure that I saw was that. He made a five hundred thousand dollar base salary, but with um, with bonuses, he made over a million dollars. God damn, dude! Wow. And yeah, this is like In the fucking seventies. Yeah, dude. So he's on fire, and during that time, they're just being spoiled fucking brat rich kids. So one thing that they did that really cracked me up was I found out Lyle. Um, they went to this place called Princeton Day School, mm. which was a fucking you know jerk off haven. Yeah, and during a Princeton Day School bake sale Lyle was selling chocolate covered dog treats as fucking human treats hilarious yeah <laughs> pretty funny yeah yeah, funny. yeah. <laughs> you have honestly oh man how great would it be if like having oj for dinner if he helped them bake them oh, <laughs> man. guys been stinkering since <laughs> you've been <All> right. juiced <laughs> <laughs> all right that's funny that's mm -hmm. a that's enough for me to declare them officially little stingers yeah, at dude. least lyle Lot, yeah, I have to be. I've yet to be impressed Lyle by has Eric. Stripes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So Lyle is exhibiting distinct little snicker behavior. And both of them, like, they're pretty fucked up by this point because he's very abusive. He's very controlling. He's got them both into fucking swimming, soccer, and and especially tennis. Hmm. And he hired multiple. What a rich kid activity. Tennis. Fuck off, dude. Tennis growing up. The dad, right? Not OJ. Just. (laughs) Yeah, OJ became a permanent house guest. <laughs> yeah, that would be that'd be great if he actually helped them commit the murders. Actually, he killed Jose and Kitty. But during this time, there there's there's a ton of people that can substantiate them being abused, and not just not just like not physical abuse, but just being fucking humiliated constantly, like no matter what they were doing. Like a tennis fucking thing and just verbally berating them in public kind of dude, thing? Not, dude, not only that, but like while tennis coaches were coaching the kids, like Jose would fucking run onto the court to critique not only what the coach was teaching, but how the son was performing. Uh-huh. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And eventually, like, they would just go through tennis coaches like it was nothing because yeah. eventually they would just be like, fuck this shit, dude. I don't, I don't yeah. need this that I bad. coach somebody else for the same Yeah, I can coach some other fucking brat. Yeah. Um. So at this point, like they're going through all this. They're just clearly fucked up, spoiled rich kids. So when he gets the position to Carolco in 1986, they have to move out to California. So initially, they'll move out to uh, Calabasas, which is like, Mm. I guess, made famous by the fucking Kardashians living there. Right. And then they're out there for a while. And during this time, um, his his main objective within Carolco at this time was to kind of sh- kind of write in the shit for this um, subsidiary of our, of uh, fucking Carolco called International Video Entertainment, and in 1986 they had lost 20 million dollars, but by the time he became involved in that year, by 1987 they recorded an eight million dollar profit. Wow! Damn. Now the guy that had been running uh, International Video Entertainment before that was a guy named Noel Bloom, who made most of his money as a pornography distributor. So right on. Yeah, man. <laughs> Pretty awesome, dude. But for yeah. whatever reason, and Jose said <laughs> the president of squirts, <laughs> <laughs> squirts, Inc. <laughs> squirts, rental pussies. <laughs> OJ was also the spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> so this dude, no bloom um, factors in a little bit later, too, because he and fucking Jose hated each other. Jose wanted him out. Because he wanted to show, he found out that he was probably the reason why this company was losing so much money. Yeah, so get rid of him and let me show you what I can yeah. do. And Jose also had a pension for not only humiliating his own kids, but he really got off on humiliating employees. Damn. Yeah. All right, so were, this guy turned into a real pile of a, shit. A, yeah. Yeah, he's a pile of shit, tried and true. And there, there's so many people are just giving all these different instances of him being an absolute fucking cocksucker. People were, were outwardly talking shit about him at his own memorial service. Wow. That's how fucked up somebody is. Damn. So there's beef between him and this guy, Noel Bloom, the pornographer. And then it gets to the point where Noel ends up suing Jose and Carol Co. And Noel is awarded half a million dollars. I don't know if it's for wrongful termination or just something fucked up happened along the way that Jose was deemed responsible for. Mm -hmm. So they ended up having to pay this guy, Noel Bloom, a half a million dollars. Even after that payout, there was bad blood between the two of them. Yeah. So just keep that in mind for later. So at this point, they're fucking, they're in Calabasas and the little stinker boys, they're fucking running wild. Rich kids, Jose's got millions of dollars, yet they're engaging in fucking burglaries. Whoa. Yeah. These are motherfucking burglars. In their dude. own neighborhood? In their own neighborhood. Damn. And people knew it was him. Um, like Eric used to have a buddy named Craig Signorelli who was involved in this shit too. Italian kid, can't yeah, do any good. you, <laughs> yeah. How did he end up in fucking Beverly Hills? Uh, stirring a lot of gravy, I'll tell you that much, pal. <laughs> but he was one of the ones that was in cahoots, and once they found out that you know they would they would steal from people's houses that they were just chilling at, so oh, it wasn't yeah, hard yeah. to figure out who was fucking doing this shit, right? And Eventually, they got busted for stealing. They stole a bunch of fucking cash, jewels, and they stole a fucking safe, too. God damn. Yeah, so these motherfuckers were getting after it. Yeah. And at this point, one of them rats, and it might have been this guy, Craig Signorelli. He was somehow involved. Um, he was he was Eric's buddy. And they get popped for it. 
Now, at this point, fucking Lyle is an adult. So, I'm trying to think when this was. This was fucking... Sorry, I can't remember when this was. Lyle being an adult, meaning he's 18? Yeah, Lyle yeah. like fucking... Eight, I think Lyle might have been 19 at this point. And Lyle, he had graduated high school. He had gone on to Princeton, but he got kicked out of Princeton for fucking cheating on a psychology 101 exam. Hmm. So they sent his ass back to fucking Calabasas. So he's just chilling at this point. Uh-huh. So they find out that the Menendez brothers are the ringleaders of this fucking burglary ring that's been going around Calabasas and the surrounding area, which is like... it's. Northwest of Malibu. Yeah. So they find out that they were doing all this shit. Jose realizes how much trouble these kids are in because his 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 MO for fucking taking care of anything. is just throw money at it till it goes away. And even though he's abusive to his sons, it applies to them, too. Because anytime they get fucked up, it's like, all right, there's an excuse here or I'm just going to take care of it with money. Yeah. He doesn't want him to go to jail. Yeah. Yeah. Especially fucking Lyle because he's an adult here. So he finds a way to get the authorities to believe that everything was Eric's fault. Damn. And eventually they're just like, fine. And Jose he had, did that? Or Jose, Lyle did? Yeah, you know, Jose did that. And he also showed up at the fucking, at the fucking, I think it was the Malibu PD office with a fucking van full of shit that they stole. To and like we, return it. And yes. Say, and here, yeah, like, yeah. please, like, you know, take this as, as a, a, a token of just how sorry my kids van are. Full of shit. He showed up with the, with the kid's fucking lawyer to uh-huh. bring this shit into the police station. So Eric ends up getting fucking. Uh, he gets probation for it. Lyle doesn't get anything because Eric just takes the fucking rap for everybody. And he's yeah. like 16, so he's not going to go to jail. Yeah, it's just, you yeah. know, he just looks like a fucking asshole. And yeah. more than anything, Jose's fired up at this point because it makes him look bad. Mm-hmm. All right. So this, I believe, was 1987. Part of his probation is that he has to now take counseling. And the judge recommends it for the entire family. Mm-hmm. So Kitty, the mom, is talking to one of her friends. She's like, yeah, I know a fucking counselor in our area. It's this guy named Jerome Ozeal. So they start going to him. The entire family goes. I think everybody else peters out quickly, but Eric continues to go to this guy. Okay. Little fucking weasel. Um, you know, that's kind of that's kind of besides the point. So Eric's Eric seems like more of like the fucking the laid back kind of like not as intense. Like Lyle's starting to emulate his father more and more. Yeah, and, personality wise. Yeah, and yeah. Lyle is definitely the more dominant of the two. Like he's mm. definitely got a fucking big older brother energy. Yeah, I can convince him. Obviously, he's having him do these B and E's with him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a fourteen year old kid that's like, let's go rob a house. Mm-mm. Not that at all, buddy. Yeah. So then, Eric. At this point, like Eric, he's finishing high school and he's spending a lot of time with his buddy Craig Signorelli, and they would just hang out. In the fucking uh, in the fucking mountains, and they would just talk about the future and talk about different things they wanted to do. They were both aspiring screenwriters. They wrote a little script called Friends. Hang on, <laughs> hang on. Not the Friends. No, not the Friends. Feature. Yeah, of a movie. It's a it's a, yeah it's a movie. Yeah, Starring not even a full length movie. Chandler Bing, Phoebe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So apparently this this script was fucking 62 pages long. <laughs> nice. And it revolved around a dude inheriting a nine figure inheritance from murdering his parents. Jesus Christ. Whoa. And Signorelli. <laughs> classic Signorelli, <laughs> dude. But Eric was part of the team that wrote this fucking script about a dude murdering his fucking parents to in- inherit hundreds of millions of dollars. Guess who he had type up that script? Jake has an answer. OJ o. Simpson. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> no, he had his mom, who he eventually murdered, type up the script. Oh, oh my God. God, <laughs> dude. Oh. Jesus Christ. Wait, were they writing it on like a fucking marble composition notebook? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Just all voice recorded fucking. I don't know, but I know tapes. they, dude, they had Craig's family. His dad was also a record executive or might have been a movie executive, my bad. And they had this fucking mountain retreat that he and Eric would routinely go up to. And they went up there for like a 
couple weeks or something to bang out the script. And they came back with it and they just gave it. They came out with half of a script, 62 pages. <laughs> yeah. And Craig also gave some of it to his mom to type. So Kitty and Craig's mom were working in conjunction to type up this fucking script for these fucking Jesus. mongoloids. They also had nicknames for each other. Eric, Eric would call Craig. What do you think? <laughs> I can't. I got no guesses left. Jake. Eric would call Craig. Uh, yeah, I got nothing in the tank for that one. He would call him King. <laughs> it's kind of cool because I call my boys that. Yeah. So y'all yeah, are he was, he was before Yas Queen was even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's the original king. Now, what do you want to take a guess as to what Craig's nickname for Eric was? Little princey boy. Damn, I like that one. Yeah, I, I'm gonna jump. Yeah, Prince, Prince Eric, Shepherd. <laughs> okay. Weird. I, I'm sensing some biblical tones there. You got the king, the shepherd. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, the, they the call Fry, They call Lyle Frankincense. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, here comes James S. Murray as Murray. <laughs> All right, so at this point, we're getting into 1989. Now, the week of the murders, some fucked up things happened. Two incidents which really stand out. One is that um, Lyle has an argument with Kitty. They're arguing inside the fucking house, and then as they're arguing, it's getting heated to the point where Eric's like, all right, let me go, let me go down and see what the fuck's happening here. Eric goes down there, sees them arguing. Now, I mentioned earlier that Lyle had been wearing a hairpiece from the time he was 14. Oh, my God. Yeah, I totally forgot about this. Yeah. So <laughs> as I'm watching you in this wig for the <laughs> last 40 minutes. <laughs> so Lyle's standing there yelling at his fucking mom with his fucking hairpiece that he's had on since the age of 14. <laughs> All right. And his mom gets so fucking mad at him. Now, Eric comes down at this point. He's watching them, trying to get them to stop arguing. He, Eric has no idea that what's on his brother's head is a fucking hairpiece. He never knew. He all never these years. knew that Lyle were what? fucking. He never went fucking swimming with his Dog, brother. He did not know. They were swimmers. I thought. I. I. Yeah. He I guess did you got not the, know uh, the cap he, on. He, yes. Right? He did not know. Damn. Right. And the thing was, wow. like, he had hair. Like, I don't think his hair was as fucked up as his dad insinuated that it was. Yeah, I don't. I gotta know what his yeah. hair looked like. That his dad was like. It feels like it's just humiliation. Right. Because I mean, he's just he shaves his head now, so it's it's hard to tell. But even after they went to jail, what's like, the most recent picture of Lyle Menendez you've seen uh, that you know he shaves his head these days? Two years ago, I watched a video. I watched a video from two years ago that showed a mural that they were responsible for, um, kind of getting uh, green lighted at the prison where they're at. Uh -huh. They wanted something that had like this fucking um, like a like a yoga instructor co-signed for this shit, and they were able to convince the warden to allow them to paint this mural in the exercise yard. But it was just full of these bright colors and all this like all these positive scenes and mm -hmm. just, just a really nice mural. And Lyle did like the prison pose where he's crouching down and just staring at the camera and he's got a bald yeah. head. And then also there's a picture of him with a bald head with his second wife. Lyle? Yes. Second wife. He got married we're, we're, and all right. Dog, we're gonna get to that. Woo! All right. Whoa. This is a little Scrap spicy, in. man. It's a little spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a bullet, dude? <laughs> this fucking dang. How many times do you have to pump this thing? <laughs> he just shot Jake. <laughs> Maybe that's how it happened. There you go, you dickhead. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> See how easy it is to accidentally blow your parents' head off? <laughs> so that is that is one strange incident, which you could see is kind of like the prelude to these murders. So there well, are what happened with the hair, though, dog. did I interrupt you like during yeah, that argument? I, uh, I did... left out a very important point. So during the argument that Eric's trying to stop between Lyle and Kitty Menendez, Kitty rips the fucking hair piece off his head. This. <laughs> How could you not murder your mom after ripping off your fucking toupee and revealing <laughs> that you've been wearing since you're 14? I... And in front of he got outed to Eric. At Brother, that point, yeah. Right? yeah, I cannot substantiate it. However, after reading what I've read, I have reason to believe that not only did she rip it off of his head, but she farted into it and threw it at his brother. Shut up. No way. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I would do if I was Kitty Menendez, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's absolute murder right there. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's that, that's ass, one thing ass, that happened. All right. So <laughs> at this point, shit's fucking heated in the Menendez household. Yeah, this Ho- is like eighty nine. You said it is. This is things yeah. are heating up. Yep. Yeah. This is August coming to a boil. So the murders happened on August twentieth. This is the week of. Okay. So there's that argument, and then later that night, Eric's li- or I'm sorry, Lyle's in living in the guest house at this point. Lyle calls his mom late at night. She assumes this to apologize. He just wants to scream at her even more. Jesus. For fucking ripping his toupee off in front of his bro. Later in the week, Jose ended up getting a bonus for something he did at work. So they chartered a, a shark fishing boat. The entire family went out on the shark fishing boat. And while they're out there, I feel like they made their decision to fucking murder their parents. On the boat with them, they decided to do With it. them. Now, yeah. there's a fucking very strange video where... <laughs> What do you want to say, Jake? Is it after she used his toupee for bait? <laughs> <laughs> she soaked it in chum and he had to put it back on his head to go to school. <laughs> so they're on this fucking uh, shark fishing, fishing cruise. And I found this very strange video where the fucking captain is talking about what the family was like that day. He's like, man, it was fucking strange because they came on here. And as soon as they got on the boat, Kitty and Jose went to one end of the boat and the brothers went to another. And he's like, he's like, nobody did any fishing. He's like, eventually got to the point where me and my fucking first mate or whoever the guy is, we were just like, fuck it. We're going to fish. Right. Yeah. The the tension was so thick between this family that nobody fucking did anything. Uh Uh-huh. All right. So they end up driving to fucking San Diego with Craig Signorelli's ID to purchase two fucking shotguns. Oh, damn. Wow, smart of them. Wow. Even back then in the fucking 80s, they knew to go two counties away to buy the murder weapon. With Stinker Craig's fucking ID. <laughs> Signorelli! <laughs> yeah! Classic Signorelli! <laughs> Ma, what are you doing? I didn't drive to San Diego to buy no shotguns. Why are you always blaming me, huh? Probably Anthony. I don't know. <laughs> Make a bruschetta. What do you think I was doing that day? I do what have I done? Shotgun. Come on. What am I going to do? Stir gravy with a shotgun? Don't, don't hit me with the spoon, ma. It's not my shotguns, all right? Give me that toupee back, ma. That's my toupee. <laughs> I swear to God, if your gravy wasn't so good, I would have left three years ago. I can't God. stop farting. <laughs> My God. Again, this is conjecture. <laughs> That's incredible. I'm sure the Signorellis are very nice people. <laughs> he joined the witness protection program and allegedly became Papa John. <laughs> <laughs> that was impressive. You just, Dude. you just be, you got the role. Obviously, thank you, John. Uh, thank you, you, man. You became Greg Signorelli right here thank in the fucking room. Yeah. Thank you. You want to write Godfather Four with me? <laughs> <laughs> it's only forty-eight pages. <laughs> it's actually a YouTube series. <laughs> oh oh man. Yeah. So they go to buy these fucking shotguns. They never found the shotguns, by the way. Really? They never told where they were. Well, how they got? Did they get footage of them buying them or something? I don't know if they got they footage. I think they, they found the receipts. Them? Jesus Christ! So more amateur than I thought. Well, dude, they, they're pretty good in some degrees, but then other things that they do, they're just like, come on, man. Yeah, you drove all the way and you brought back the fucking receipt. Yep. Like Jesus Christ, Dog. you're not going to return these guns, <laughs> dude. So anyway, like we're heating up. And we're getting to the night of the murders. It's fucking August 20th now. So Kitty and fucking Jose, they're sitting in the den of their home. They're watching movies. uh, They're eating snacks. And Lyle comes up to Eric's room. He's like, look, let's fucking do it. This is the time we're going to do it. So as they're just fucking sitting there chilling, they get their fucking shotguns. They go down there. They burst into the den. They start shooting their parents. So they sneak up behind. I think what happened was I shouldn't say burst in because what I believe happened first was there was a set of doors behind the couch. And I believe they came in those doors because Jose was initially shot 
behind the head. I don't mean to point this gun at you, John. <laughs> It's all right. I'll point one right back at you. Okay. So Jose was initially shot in the back of the head, which was an odd choice for me because considering what a cocksucker he was, and if you're going to do this to somebody. Uh, you want to see like the fear in his face. Yeah. I I mean, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Do you think they did it, but that yes. they don't deserve life in prison for it because of the abuse? They clearly did it. I think. Okay. Okay. And one thing that always bothered me about about this case and during the trial was that they're constantly referred to as boys. They're 18 and 21 years old when this happened. Yeah, yeah. I always thought they were so like the bit, oldest yeah, one it was makes, 18. Yeah, it makes it seem like they're fucking both teenagers. Right, they're fucking college kids. Yeah, they're not. Oh, yeah, they were college kids. But um, but yeah, getting back to, like, to the murders. Um, so they shoot. There was a total of 14 shots. Jesus Christ. Shotgun dude, blasts, yeah. too. So... One one is enough. Yeah, dude. <laughs> dude that's a, that's another sitcom that Craig and uh, fucking Eric wrote. One is enough. Uh, it was actually part of the TGIF lineup. <laughs> but they, um, yeah, there were fourteen shots total. Jose was shot five times. Kitty was shot nine times. God damn! And you could see not only footage of the crime scene, but you can find video of the, that the LAPD took of the crime scene. Really? Yeah. Wow. The way it seemed is though Jose probably just died instantly without having any idea what was going on. Uh-huh. Kitty, however, she tried to crawl away and she made it a little distance. Oh man. And then they just kept unloading into her. Um most of the back of Jose's head was blown off, but with Kitty, her most extensive wounds came to her face. Like she was shot directly in the face. One of her eyes was missing and her face, it was just. And you think she crawled after she was shot? She in did, yes. Yeah. Oh. Well, I don't know if she crawled after she was shot yeah. in the face, but she was shot and then started crawling uh-huh. and then ended up next to Jose. One very fucking moronic thing that they did, which I don't know, I shouldn't call it moronic because it seemed to have worked at least for a few months, was that they shot each of their parents in the knees to make it seem as though it was a mafia hit. Oh my God. Classic Signorelli again. <laughs> I wonder who told him to do that. Signorelli, get back in here. What do you mean? I didn't shoot nobody in the fucking knee. I watch your fucking basketball over here. What am I going to shoot somebody in the knee for? What do I need that for? Christ almighty. Somebody take her out of the house <laughs> for an hour. Take, take her to watch fucking Steel Magnolias or whatever's in the, in the movies right now. I think that might be the exact right time period. Shoot him in the... My, what are you going to shoot somebody in the What are I going to do that for? I got enough on my plate. Yeah, I would love some more. Thank you. <laughs> Well, yeah, they shoot him in the knees because they want it to seem like it's a mafia hit. So the that's after they blow the fucking dad's head off. Once he's dead, they shoot their knee, the knees. Because if he came through, yeah, well, yeah, they the shot him the head, in the back of the dead. head, and then they came around to shoot him. And then I think Eric was the primary aggressor with his mother, and Lyle was the primary aggressor for his father. Really, man, what did what did Kitty ever do to Eric? Besides well, rip his brother's leg off in front of him. <laughs> yeah, I would have. That would have been the one I shot. <laughs> right, like, yeah. like your mom yeah. rips your toupee off yeah. and you and yeah. your dad. Talk like, about cutting Eric, off your nose to spite your face. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, what if he shot the top of her head off? <laughs> <laughs> Just holding, holding your scalp. Yeah. <laughs> Farts in and throws. It. <laughs> <laughs> they have a forensic analyst like on the stand. Like uh, this scalp was clearly farted into by at least one of the brothers. <laughs> You think if the uh, if the dad could have watched this, you know, from an outside perspective, he would have nicknamed his kids the the mightiest murder men. <laughs> oh, I like it, Jake. I think he would have. I really do. Well, that's pretty fucking gruesome, dude. It gets it gets funnier. I just <laughs> trust me. That's not what I. Do you think that's funny? Where do you hear these things? Dog, so they just shot their parents and considering that they fired f- the shotguns 14 fucking times both of them just assumed the police were coming any second absolutely 
Is it Beverly Hills? Yeah, it's Beverly Hills. Yeah. It's it's a residential neighborhood. I mean, <sighs> it could be a big yard, but it is, it somebody's going to hear but yeah. some of those fucking shots. And it's early enough as to where it was, it was before 10 p.m., so it's early enough as to where people are probably mostly still awake. Yeah. As soon as it happens, they're just like, all right, well, we're going to be caught any fucking minute now. A little bit of time goes by and they're just like, well, right. they were waiting for the cops to come. They like were they waiting for the cops running? to come, dude. They were waiting for the cops to come. Jesus Christ. So they just were going to, they were just going to take jail. They were just going to take it. God damn. So they're waiting. I don't think they waited too long, but they're waiting and they're just like, all right, like there's no sirens. They're clearly not coming. Nobody called the fucking police. Like, what do we do now? They decided to kind of stage the crime scene to make it look like to really make it look like somebody else did it. OK, so yeah. No, because initially it was the shooting to the knee to make it look like the oh, mafia yeah, did they it. shot in the knees and then they were going to stay there. They were going to stay there because say what mafia came through and couldn't <laughs> find us. Yeah. Craig Signorelli is going to be a, a witness. <laughs> He's going to be up there with his ma. <laughs> what I'm going to stay on. swear on a pot of gravy, ma. You're going to put me on a witness stand. Take her to the movies too, which is. <laughs> but dog, at this point, they're like, "All right, we're the police aren't coming, so we got to fucking figure something else out here." They decide, like, "All right, we got to come up with an alibi." So before they devise the alibi, they're like, "All right, we're gonna pick up the shells." They pick up all fourteen shell casings, strange, and then they're like, "All right, let's fucking go to the movies and see what's playing." So they go to the movies and they watch fucking Batman, the Michael Keaton movie. Holy shit! Yeah. The Michael Keaton movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ever heard of it, you piece of shit? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. You'll wind <laughs> it up. Hey, you got anything to fucking say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There. You want me to get that bullet for him? Shoot him again. Shoot oh, him God. in the knee. No, Let's make no, it look like a mafia. No, please don't. Ma, we're shooting Jake in the knee. <laughs> he deserved it, all right? <laughs> Yeah, chicken palm would be nice. Thank you. <laughs> Got any fresh pulled mozzarella? <laughs> Speaking of which, dude, my wife was uh, eating uh, mozzarella and balsamic and tomato in Look. this chair where I'm sitting about an hour ago. That's a fucking caprese salad right there, pal. It is. And as soon as she finished, I was like, Jane, uh, that looks really good. Could you mind making me some? She's like, I ate the last little mozzarella. <laughs> Damn. So give me that shotgun. I shit could have brought you some mozzarella. <laughs> Ma, I mean, Jamie. <laughs> but dude, so they clean up the fucking shells and they go to the movies to go see Batman. And are they like, I don't know if there's like pictures of this, but they got to have some. Excited some for the movie? Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Did they stop at McDonald's and get the commemorative cup on the way? <laughs> they got to be like wash off and they must be covered in blood at this point, right? They, Especially if they were like staging it. Uh, they went to, I think they cleaned up in Lyle's room in the guest house. Okay. Police never ended up going out there. Now, there were cars parked in the front. All right, I'm skipping around, but all right, we'll keep it with Batman right now. Yeah. So they go to see Batman. They were there for the fucking two hours that Batman is. And uh, by the way, do you think the part where like in Batman where they show his parents being murdered? They're like, dude, <laughs> no fucking way, dude. <laughs> dude, us too. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Batman didn't kill him. Ah. <laughs> That's going to be in the next episode. I think he did. I think the Menendez <laughs> brothers are innocent, but I think Bruce Wayne killed his parents. If we do fucking Bruce Wayne before one of the fucking Jokers, I will lose my goddamn fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, they, they get finished at the movies and they probably got rid of the weapons. I don't know what they ended up doing. They never found the weapons and I, I haven't looked up what they did with them, but I know they haven't found the weapons. I mean, right. dude, you could throw it in any fucking dumpster. In Los Angeles, mm -hmm. as long as you drive away from your house, it's not going to get found, you know? I, I take that back. I actually, initially, they stored them in the trunk of a car that was in the garage. And they left them at the house? I don't know if it was in fucking... I can't believe Eric's the police car never fucking came. I'm I don't know. I got to look into this more. I'm just waiting for Mike to reveal that he has both shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> you close your close eyes. Your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no, I do not have both shotguns, but I do have something cool. Um, there's this card that um, Mark Jackson from the New York Knicks. You fucking have the card? Yeah, dude, I got it off Whoa. eBay. This is like harder to get than fucking like 
real rookie cars and shit, isn't it? If pushing a bus button on eBay is hard, then yeah, it was really fucking hard, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was really fucking hard to pay, spend thirty five hundred dollars. You fucking idiot. <laughs> No, but I, I don't know, man. It was I found it on eBay and I wanted it, so I got it. But this is where at the Staples or Clippers. This or is at Lakers Madison Square game? Garden. So it's Mark Jackson who was a guard for the New York Knicks, and it's just a regular card. But how'd they end up in New York? Well, they used to live in New York until they were fucking um, sixteen and eighteen. Oh, so they were only in L.A. for like a couple years. So, when... Yeah, dude they they moved to L.A. in nineteen eighty six. All right. So years. up until ninety six, but also they traveled a lot too. So I wouldn't doubt that. They well, we can find it right now. When was this card? Oh Ooh. shit, dude! So this card was from the eighty nine ninety season. So yeah, I yeah. Th- I thought that the picture was taken like within the week of the murder. Yeah, I thought it was like OJ going to Chicago. It had after the fucking you know, murder. Well, I mean, the NBA season runs. Yeah, the NBA season runs from November to June, so it had to have been taken the year prior, oh but God. for this year. But. Regardless, the Menendez brothers are in the corner of this fucking trading card. This is crazy. Yeah, pretty awesome, isn't it? It is awesome. I can't so, believe you fucking got it. It's sick. So right, I gotta, I gotta take a look at that. That's, dude. They look like two goobers planning <laughs> to kill their parents. Dude, what if they got like hot dog guns at the game? <laughs> <We're just shooting. laughs> one shot their dad with a hot dog gun. The other one got him with a t-shirt gun. Wait, who's wearing the hat? I was gonna ask you which one is the one with the hair piece. Yes, I'll throw it to me. Okay, here you go. All right, nice. so, all right, so Eric is wearing the hat. Lyle is next to him without the hat. Lyle's wearing the piece then. Yes. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's got that good, motherfucking thing rug. on his head. <laughs> pretty convincing. Yeah, pretty good. So after they see Batman, they come back to the house. Still no police. That's fucking crazy. Fucked up, man. Nobody gives a fuck in this neighborhood. I think... When the, it was funny too, like when they asked neighbors like what they thought of the Menendez's, um, a female neighbor, the thing that she had to say about Kitty was that she never had her hair done. Oh my god, what a fucking bitch neighbor! <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious. Never saw her with her hair up. So they're just hanging out. They're like, "All right, well, we've got to fucking call police now. Now, you know, we can't go see Batman again." <laughs> Plus, Mom, what am I gonna do? Go see Batman again? <laughs> It's closed for tonight. <laughs> so they called the fucking cops. They called on their own crime. Dude, the fucking 911 call is the most ridiculous shit you'll ever hear. Oh, yeah. This was where the cable guy. Yeah, it's the basis for, for the yeah. Ben Stiller scene and cable guy. I think they were Asian. <laughs> <laughs> it's that bad. So the cops show up. And when they show up, they're really fucking hamming it up. They're being little stinkers here, man. Fucking Eric's on the front lawn in the fetal position, crawling around, crying. (laughs) (laughs) That is fucking awesome. (laughs) She's like, army crying. I fucking miss you, (laughs) mate. The other one's doing parkour all over the house. Can't stop crying. (laughs) His quads are on fire. (laughs) Burned his quads up. So they come and um, they question both of, both of the brothers for hours that night. Nobody fucking suspects that they were responsible for their parents' murder. Really? Wow. So even with this overdone charade of fetal position and crying, like they nobody, don't see through it. Dude, nobody fucking suspected it. And one of the things they said that should have raised red flags right off the bat was that I think it was Lyle said when they came in from seeing Batman they walked in the house and they smelled gun smoke, uh-huh. which it was three fucking hours ago. You wouldn't have smelled it. Oh, 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 OK. So they question them. Nobody even thinks anything. At this point, it's become a big news around town. And almost immediately, they start fucking blowing through Jose's money. Do they have like a credit card attached to his name, basically? Yes. The, yeah. They ha- they have full access to his money. Apparently, yeah. like he had an estimated $14 million. God damn. Now, the they didn't cleaned up. Doc, they didn't have access to that right away. So I think they were just using whatever was in his accounts at the same time. Like it wasn't like shit, like life insurance policies or anything like that. Right. Yeah. So, but there's still a lot of fucking money to, to tear through. So they're buying all kinds of shit. Now, Lyle spent the bulk of the money. It's estimated in the. The few weeks after the murders, Lyle spent anywhere between five hundred thousand and seven hundred thousand dollars. Damn! Holy crap! He bought 
fucking a Rolex. He bought a Porsche. His fucking dad bought him like an Alfa Romeo or Romero. I don't know. Romeo. Before Romeo, died, Alfa yeah. Romeo. Before he died. Yeah. He wanted a Porsche, but his dad bought him an Alfa Romeo. And he fucking felt slighted by that. Just by the last fucking, thing he yelled. Yeah. Before, <laughs> fucking piece of shit, Alfa Romeo. I hate this fucking Italian car. What are you talking about hating Italian cars, ma? Nobody hates Italian cars. <laughs> so he buys a fucking Porsche. And then he has the, the thing that ends up taking up the bulk of the money that he spent was... Uh, a restaurant. You want to take a guess as to what kind of restaurant it was? Uh, Italian pasta place. Oh, dude, it was it Chili's? It was in Princeton, New Jersey. It was a wing spot. Just a regular pizza and wings place. Just wings, and it was called. He called it Mister Buffalo's. <laughs> <laughs> OJ. That was OJ's nickname. Mister Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, wow. dude. Full circle. Oh man, dude, you wow. just you just gave me chicken skin. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave me chicken skin. <laughs> I don't get it, but I'm gonna say it to everybody I meet from now on. No, yeah, no yeah. man gives me chicken skin. <laughs> you motherfucker. I'm sorry, <laughs> Signorelli. Nobody's giving anybody chicken skin, Ma. For the love of God, where's a chicken palm? So how in a fucking in the month after he fucking Dog. bought a restaurant, which is not like a month long process. Nope. These little MFs are balling out, dude. Did he go to Princeton to operate it or just pay somebody to do it from He did. LA? Well, it, I mean, it was a functional business and he just took it over because he remembered it from when he was going to, to Princeton University. Uh, and he was just like, oh, I really like this place. I want it. I'm going to buy it. Hmm. And of course, the business failed. Like, right. I don't even think I think. Well, he got busted by the time I think it had the chance to get off the ground. Yeah. But yeah, he had a Mr. Buffalo's <laughs> for a little bit. And then um, would have been cool. If you got it off the ground, you know how like when they put your wings in the sauce, they put it in a container and they shake mm -hmm. it up. Would have been funny if like he just loaded up a shotgun with wing sauce <laughs> and just fired it at your fucking wings from the back of the bowl <laughs> <laughs> when it's on the table. <laughs> and Lyle will be right by to sauce your wings. <laughs> <laughs> you got to rip his toupee off first. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would have been great if it turned into Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> so months go by before like they're even seriously suspected. Did was it the next year? Like did New Year's happen? Or was um, it within the six months or four I months? I I think it was three years later. I'm sorry, three months later. I think it was okay. three months later that they were arrested. So what happened was during the time between the murders and when they were arrested, Eric was still going to the, to the uh, mental health professional who, who he had been going to ever since he got busted for burgling. Yeah. That initial one, the family was going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dr. Uh, Jerome Ozeal. Mm. So he was going there and he admitted to the murders in one of the sessions Whoa, but he's not allowed to say he's that. He's not right? allowed. The doctor fucking patient privilege. He's, Wait, he's, I thought. Yeah, I thought murder like. Uh, I thought murder was the exception. It can or, be if somebody if if it's going to happen in the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or if he's making threats to, to do it. Right, a murder. If it already, already happened, happened, you really can't. Whoa. This guy was a real pile of uh, donkey dicks, though. Yeah, he because broke his oath. He did, man. So son of a bitch. What <laughs> and the way he went about it was especially slimy. So he was calling like every friend he could think of saying like, look, somebody just admitted to murders and I think the police should know about it. Like fellow therapists like to get advice. Yes. Yeah. There's no way. And then eventually the consensus was that like unless he threatens you or is threatening somebody else. Yeah, you're not then. supposed to do that. So what I think he did was that I think he wanted to like kind of rile Eric up and he knew the way to do that would be to inform Lyle that he told him that he told other people no that he, he wanted I think that he wanted to get Eric to tell Lyle that oh, Eric was oh, talking yeah, about yeah. the murders to the therapist gotcha and he convinced him to get Lyle to come in to the office now together or separate together uh -huh. so when he set up this meeting Dr. Ozeal had his fucking side bitch hanging out in the Ozeal had a Gumar? Dog. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't like, it wasn't as hot as it sounds. <laughs> he basically tricked this lady. So 
he had been counseling this woman over the phone. And he had been telling her everything she wanted to hear. She had never met this guy. This, um, what the fuck was her? Her name was um, Judalon Smith. This lady's name was. So she had somehow gotten hooked up with him doing phone sessions. And, you know, he was, he was a pricey fucking Beverly Hills therapist. Yeah. She couldn't afford him. And he's like, well, there's there's a way we can figure this out. You could pay me with your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, she paid him with her pussy. <laughs> My name is Jeff, and you can pay me with pussy. <laughs> but dude, um, there's an LA Times article which which details these interactions, which really fucking cracked me up. They talk about how they're having these conversations over the phone, and she's spilling her guts, and like this guy knows what the fuck he's doing. He's clearly like taking advantage of this mm-hmm. pretty attractive middle aged crazy woman. Gets her to tell him everything that she can about herself so he can use it to manipulate her later. Yeah, blackmail her yeah. to wow. be there when he needs her to be there. Because he's married now and he has kids. Mm-hmm. And he's a short king, too. This motherfucker's five foot six. <laughs> Damn. So he's he's fucking... You're, you're, you're playing in some dangerous waters when you're trying to fuck hot chicks and you're five six. <laughs> so they eventually arrange to meet up and... He shows up at her door with fucking flowers and she sees that he's fucking five, six. And she's just like, dude, I can't do this. Man. I don't fuck with short kings, oh, man. I'm damn, sorry. Dude. So Napoleon ass, Freudian ass. <laughs> <laughs> so he's fucking incensed at this point and he starts fucking like really like tr- trying to manipulate her and trying to fucking blackmail her into yeah. like spilling the beans as to in regards to everything that she fucking told him. Mm-hmm. So she reluctantly starts having sex with this guy. It progresses to the point he fucks her up so bad mentally. And this is part of the played into her becoming homeless. Oh. So rather than her be without a fucking place to live, he invites her to move in with his wife and his kids. Oh my God. And his God. wife allows it. So his he really go- goombard. Kid. Yeah. He had a goombard. <laughs> Ma. <laughs> and he has her living at his fucking house with his wife and kids. God damn. Yeah. So anyway, going back to where he arranges for the side bitch to be in the waiting room to substantiate that what he he wants her to overhear what either Lyle or Eric say. Through the admitting door to the or is there yeah. a recording device? She recorded it, apparently. Okay. And then. Oh, this is super illegal. For it is. It is. Do, it's right? so fucked up. He ended up getting fucking disbarred or whatever the term yeah. is for doing this shit. However. It was allowed because it was technical. Lyle technically threatened him. Okay. And in the process of talking about him threatening. They somehow allowed them admitting to the murders to be used against them. Gotcha. OK, so that's what eventually leads to their arrest. So Damn. Lyle is the first to get ar- arrested. Now, Eric's over in fucking Israel playing tennis. Just he- for pleasure. <laughs> well, dude, it, I mean, he was a good tennis player. Like at one point. He either was the top or was in the top 10 of fucking 18 and under. Damn. Oh, wow. In the United States. So he was really fucking good. Yeah. He could have, he could have been somebody. Yeah, man. If he didn't blow his parents' fucking heads off. <laughs> yeah. Would it be fair to say that, that was a fault? <laughs> yeah, maybe fair. All right. Thanks, man. So anyway. It'd be definitely fair to say it was over the line. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, um, he's in fucking Israel playing tennis and Lyle gets busted and word gets to Eric that like, look, your brother just got arrested. They know it was you guys. So at this point, he's just it, as soon as he comes back, he's getting handcuffed. Well, <laughs> he flies into Miami because they have relatives in the Miami mm-hmm. and he, he's going to try to make a run for it. There was talk of like going to Mexico, mm-hmm. but his relatives in fucking Miami were just like, look, dude, you're not going to get away with this. Just fucking go with it. So eventually he ends up flying home to L.A. from Miami and turns himself in. So from the start, this was um, so this was 89. However, the tri- the first there were two trials. The first trial doesn't start until 1993 because they're spending years trying to determine whether or not them admitting to the therapist that they killed their parents oh, was admissible. admissible yeah. Right. So it went to the California Supreme Court and eventually they ruled it like, all right, we can use this in the trial. Yeah, I mean, you've got the information. Yeah, you know, yeah. You can't let someone walk free. Yeah, just because a fucking therapist. But broke I, yeah. Off. But they allowed it, which was like kind of 
I don't know. Yeah. Still kind of weird. Like it's. I'm yeah, not, it's weird, but I mean, they, they, they have they a choice, admit, you know. Yeah. So this was ninety three with the first trial start. Now, they tried them separately, and they tried them separately. And the bulk of the defense was that they did this because they felt as though they had no other recourse because they were being abused for so long. Mm-hmm. During the trial, I mean, it's it's without question that they were mentally abused. However, yeah. during the trial, the angle they took was that they were being sexually abused as well. Uh-huh. There is some shit that points to that actually being true, regardless of, you know, how much it seems like they're lying on the stand because you can watch all the shit. And this was really one of the more interesting aspects of the first Menendez trial was that like they allowed cameras in the courtroom. It's like this was a new thing. It was a new really thing. They before. were fucking allowing it. And it's like people's minds were like, holy shit, we're actually getting to watch this fucking shit yeah. live. Was this court TV? Like, was this then? I think yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. Information from court TV on this case. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, it is. You, you, you watch the whole thing. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch as much as I watched for Casey Anthony. However, uh, it is available on there. Damn, nice. So um, the bulk of their defense revolves around the sex abuse. And there are people that substantiate them telling them prior to the murders that they were being sexually abused. Okay. There were two things that really stood out, which showed just how fucked up their living situation was. One of their cousins was hanging out in Lyle's bedroom one day and he was just fucking around with shit around his bedroom and he was laying on the floor and he reached under the bed because he saw like a Tupperware container and Lyle's like, don't touch that. Don't touch that. The cousin pulls it out. It's a Tupperware container with turds in it. What? And he he said like fishing out for DNA. No, he says the reason why he was shitting in the Tupperware containers was because he didn't want to risk going out into the hallway to deal with his dad. Oh, my God. Yeah. Whoa. Why are these fucking kids sons of a millionaire and still living at home at, at I don't 21 know. years old? And that's what I, I think they wanted they, they knew that they were probably in line to receive inheritance. So they were willing to endure their father's abuse for as long as necessary to inherit this money. Yeah. Could also think that like, all right, they are pretty, they are being manipulated by this motherfucker for close to two decades. So I think there's kind of some weird psychological aspect, which keeps them there as well. Yeah. Like a Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So also it's like, they've got anything they want at their fingertips there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you move out, you might get the risk that dad, dad being like, all right, but you got to get a job. You got to pay for your apartment, you know? Yep, exactly. And I feel like in that situation, you're telling yourself, like, I've already been here 21 years or 18 years. Like, yeah. I can I can thug it out for yeah. a little while longer, yeah. you know? So there's that weird Tupperware thing, which, which I think is a pretty good indicator as to how extensive the abuse was. Then I found this other fucking weird tidbit where it's a former neighbor of theirs who also happened to be Lyle's ninth grade Spanish teacher. It's this woman named Alicia Hertz. No relation to <laughs> the rental car Hertz squirts. company. Yeah, she was <laughs> she was uh, OJ Simpson's Gumad. <laughs> <laughs> but this lady, Alicia Hertz, says she was invited to a dinner party at the Menendez house when um when Lyle was in high school. And she said there were a bunch of other people there too. And after dinner Lyle called them into the den where they were eventually murdered. He's like, look, I just came back from Brazil and I got this tape. I need to show this to you. It's it's so interesting. Please come watch this. So everybody that was there at this fucking dinner party came into the den to watch him put in this tape. Hits play. What do you think is on the tape? Some kind of snuff film. Yeah, I would say like porn. Nothing like Homeward Bound or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Air Bud. <laughs> Homeward yeah. Bound and gagged. <laughs> Airpud. <laughs> Portuguese version of Airbud before it even came out in the US. <laughs> was it like a fucking murder video or something? It would be Buenos Aires, bud. No, fuck, that's Argentina. <laughs> God damn it, John. Fuck you. I hate you. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> Let me get that wig off your fucking head. <laughs> yeah, rip it off. But, dude, the video that he fucking puts in, according to this neighbor, Alicia Hertz, consisted of adults having sex. While they're being watched by children. Whoa. What? Jesus Christ. And he's saying 
everybody come in. This is so interesting. This thing I found in Brazil, dude. And as soon as people recognize what's happening, they just start filtering out of the den to fucking leave. Yeah. And she said, as soon as that started happening, Jose started fucking laughing hysterically. Jesus. So as fucking unbelievable as they might be on the stand in regards to convincing people that they were sexually abused. I think there's a decent po- possibility of that happening if this guy's willing to do this shit. One, if you're obtaining that kind of fucking tape. Two, if you're that much of a fucking psychopath that you're showing it to fucking dinner party guests. Yeah. Wait, who played the tape? Lyle or Jose? Jose. Jose caught yeah, everybody Jose. that was at the dinner oh my into the fucking God. den to watch this he was, porn. He was trying to sell them an Epstein timeshare. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. In, dog, th- there's... To me, like, that's more indicative of something more fucked up than just being yelled at over yeah, fucking tennis a fucking shit happening. strict parent. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Yeah, I want to see the VH1 make a movie about the Menendez brothers' parents. I thought you were just going to say, I want to see the VHS tape. <laughs> 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 Let me check for myself. Let me see. Are these really children? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That one that he's got Vern, facial hair. Vern Troyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean that that's pretty indicative as to like the depth of dysfunction within this fucking that's house. That's fucking crazy, dog. Yeah. They're playing fucking child porn and whip ripping fucking wigs off their kids' heads, dude. <laughs> this is a fucked up what house. What did they serve yeah. for dinner that night? <laughs> <laughs> Ma, what did you make for them? <laughs> what? <laughs> Spaghetti meatballs, Jake. <laughs> Signorelli staple. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, the two trials are going on at the same time. And they allow the fucking talk of the sexual abuse to happen. Uh, they testify on their own behalf. Mm-hmm. And then other people that say they were told previously of the sexual abuse testify in their defense. The defense has these witnesses. Right. Yeah. On the stand. Okay. Yeah. And they got a fucking killer lawyer. They got um this lady named Leslie Abramson, who she also represented Phil Spector. Just killer, killer lawyer. lawyer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that good. apparently. <laughs> but she, um, she was partially responsible. However, the, the, it was a hung jury. It, it was a mistrial on both fucking trials. Oh, that's how they allowed a second trial. Yes. Yeah. So this was 1993. No shit. And then they were in jail between the first and second trial. So the the district attorney's office was unquestionably going to prosecute them again because they had already gotten fucking smoked in the um, the the Rodney King cop trial. They looked mm-hmm. like fucking dickheads because none of those guys got convicted. Yeah. And then now the OJ trial, um, the OJ trial as they approached the second Menendez trial, the OJ trial was winding down. And I think it became apparent that they were had a decent chance of losing that one as well. Uh-huh. So they're like, all right, we're going ahead with this fucking Menendez trial and we're going to get a conviction this time. So yeah. the second Menendez trial kicks off like a month and a half before OJ concludes. So there's a lot riding on the district attorney's office to get a conviction here because they're in the most high profile cases. They look like fucking dickheads yeah. at this point. It's the same judge both times. Uh, this guy, uh, St- Stanley Weisberg. So he, they plan a story. Like, I don't know how true it is. This is something I'd like to find out more about. But he was questioned in regards to possible corruption. But I think that might have just been floated out there by the Menendez defense team. Mm-hmm. But eventually that shit went away. And there were two very important rulings right before the second trial popped off. For the second trial, they were being tried together. Whereas the first one, they were tried two separate trials, which both resulted in mistrials. Right. So for the second trial, they were tried together. And two things that really fucked them. One was that no cameras were allowed in the courtroom this time. So Hmm. they weren't allowed to fucking ham it up if they were hamming it up the first time, which Hmm. which they were. And then more importantly, they were limited as to what they could talk about in regards to the sex abuse that they say they faced. Which is very strange. Yeah, how's that even? I don't know. Dude. I don't know. But they were given strict instructions that they're not going to be allowed to talk about specific things relative to the abuse. That's fucking crazy. Very fucked up. 
and th- that's that that's another large part as to why I don't think that they deserve life in prison. I don't yeah. Yeah. So they end up going to fucking the second trial happens and this is 1995 and they both end up getting convicted and they both get life in prison. Now, is this life in prison fucking 30 years, or is this you're dying in prison? You're going to die in prison. Yeah. It's like whatever consecutive life sentences yep. make, yeah. make so, it possible so, to live. Yeah, they, they're they going to be in there for fucking ever. Although now, like, there's some weird, like, resurgence and in interest in the case because a bunch of fucking TikTokers are fired up yeah. about them being locked up. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the Menendez, like, they've been in jail for, I think, 31 years now. Yeah, 31 years they've been in jail. 32, maybe. Are either of them, like, tatted up? I know you've seen the picture of the no, one dude, guy with a shaved they, head. They look relatively the same. Lyle shaved his head. Uh, he, <laughs> I can imagine, like, somebody fucking, some gang member ripped off his toupee in the prison yard. <laughs> yeah. But Eric still looks the same. They both got married in prison. Wait, did Lyle get married twice in prison, you Lyle, said? Yeah, Lyle got married twice. To, married in prison, divorced in prison, and then married again. Well, yeah, one of the weirder aspects <laughs> of uh, his marriages was that he's not allowed. They're not allowed conjugal visits. However, his first wife accused him of cheating on her in prison, so that led to that divorce. Wow, how the fuck was that supposed to? happen? I don't know. Emotional cheating, guys. Yeah, it's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, buddy. There's a picture. So he looks pretty good with a shaved head. He looks like a real prisoner. Yeah, they look, both look kind of happy. They do look happy. <laughs> yeah. They do, yeah. So he got he got married twice, and Eric is still married to the special lady that he married the first time. What makes her a special lady? Uh, one, she's named Tammy Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna leave a bitch named Tammy Ruth, John? I ain't never leaving Tammy Ruth. <laughs> you know Tammy Ruth's got that good pussy that you can't have none of. <laughs> Damn, man. Imagine being married to a fucking Tammy and you can't pork those cheeks. I know. How's that fucking possible? It should, it, Part that of the, should be legal. I would take that to the California Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah. Hey, all right. Keep them in. They'll die in prison. But let them get some fucking poo nanny. All <laughs> Ma, right. can we get a little pussy? I mean, <laughs> for crying out loud. Really? I said no pussy. <laughs> uh, you remember how Eric's nickname from Craig was Shepard? Yeah. Well, Tammy Ruth had a daughter who Eric became stepdad to, and she uh-huh. has a very special nickname for him. What do you want to guess that it is? The good Lord Shepherd. Uh, yeah. Oh, damn it. <laughs> you better uh, fucking get it right, dude. <laughs> Abraham. She I called. Winced. She calls him Earth Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't know, dude. There's some Wait. Leonard Part Six shit going on. So she had, so they can't have conjugal visits. No, but she has a child. Not by Eric. Not by Eric. Right okay. before, so, yeah, before she oh, met before. him. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. You, you think Ta- Tammy Ruth is not getting fucked before Eric? <laughs> Wait. Okay. So just holding the phone up to the. Thing. <laughs> is Tammy Ruth's daughter's dad the original dad in heaven? And that's space dad and and oh, that's a great question, dude. Eric is. Earth Dad, damn! <laughs> I think I think that's logical. Ghost Dad and Earth Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost Dad. <laughs> There's a stinker for you. Uh, oh yeah, whew. he's out. He's loose. Man, so I they seem to be doing pretty well. Like any video or picture that you see of them, they're chilling. And I feel like if. They're maintaining in prison that they were abused as, you know, children, like mm-hmm. sexually abused. I feel like that's the number one thing that people in prison hate. You know right. what I mean? When a fucking yeah. pedophile goes to prison. They were paying for protection. Them. I don't know if they still are, but I know at least when they first got locked up, they were paying for protection. You know where they are? Um, I believe they're actually together now. For decades, they were they were split up. But within the past... I think five years they were reunited. Uh, so they're and I, I think the prison they're at is near San Diego. Okay. Okay. I should know this, but I'm pretty sure it's near San Diego. You don't remember where you write the letters to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me stop that letter. Yeah, the post yeah. office. Jake, it's funny you mention that because like I since we started doing this, like I mean I've always 
considered like writing to murderers yeah just to get an idea for what they think about like now (laughs) and if we could like what our interactions would look like but now especially since we're doing these every other week now yeah thinking like damn like who would i write to i i mean uh without revealing any where i used to work and stuff like that I used to get prison letters, all that directed to me. Uh, just to clarify, <laughs> just send me more pictures. Uh, <laughs> no, we used to get prison letters all the time. So they're very prolific when it comes to prison. Now, would you have to open them when they came in? Sometimes, yes. Yeah, usually we'd have to open them. Do you have to just inspect that there's nothing else in there, or do you Dude, have to read the content? You need to hear something after up. Yeah. We were told to throw them away. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Where the fuck did you used to work? Yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the so. opposite of a Toys R Us? Because that is fucking not a happy place. <laughs> I will say, so with this this picture that they uh, of them now, they look they look happier in these mug shots mm-hmm. than they do at the, the Knicks game. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> front row seats at the yeah, Knicks game. Fucking feet on the hardwood. Smile, boys. Yeah. <laughs> well. What do you think? Uh, should we write letters yeah, knowing I that Jake's so. gonna fucking rip them up and throw them in the fucking <laughs> in the shredder? I, I never, I never did that. I, I left them on the counter. <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that, Jake. <laughs> did you ever read any really hot ones? No, there was never any hot ones. They were all sad, man. They were, all, they were like the sad. It was. Uh, it was like reading a kid's letter to Santa. I'm Knowing not, that it's never going to get. It's never going to. Santa's never going to read it. Yeah. And the spelling is worse. <laughs> and I hate to say that. It's just. It's would would you have to play the prison Santa? <laughs> just have these fucking hardened gang members sitting on your lap. All right. What do you want this year? Uh, I want my case to be thrown out. And I want to see my children again. I just feel a shiv in my side the whole time. All of them piss Everybody on your fucking lap. Everybody you as yeah. I sit down. <laughs> oh, I would I would write to some. Yeah, I think I think you should. Who uh besides those two, who's actually in jail and alive that we've covered? Uh Leslie Van Houten from the Manson family still is. Oh. And you know what? Honestly, man, like she's somebody who I think is seems genuinely remorseful. Uh I mean, what was she fucking like a teenager? 19 yeah, years she was old? a teenager. Yeah. Under the fucking spell of some charismatic fucking madman, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like that's been long enough. I would, and you know what? Uh, Tex Watson, he's another one who I would consider writing to. Cause he's he, still alive, too? He is, yeah. In jail? He is, and uh, he's born again. He actually wrote a book, and I'd be interested to read that, describing his entire life. Really? I'm reading... Uh... The Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, novel. I got it now too. How you like yeah, it? Yeah, it's fucking great. Oh, I love it too. Yeah. Um, what did I just get into? Um. Yeah, I just talked about. I I just finished a chapter where they talk about like Cliff's fucking um movie interest. Oh yeah, yeah. So the foreign films and yeah. stuff. Yeah. They haven't talked about his, him on the boat yet. No, I haven't gotten right. to that. Oh boy, yeah. that's a fun chapter. Oh man. Um. Yeah, we should start. Uh, you you should write to these people. I think you have to get a PO box before you um, start this, though. What? You can't be yes. putting your fucking yeah. return address All right. to yeah. these prisoners. Uh, <laughs> why don't we? Um, why don't we? Why don't we try this? Let's all write letters to prisoners. Oh my god! As though we're like hot chicks, <laughs> and we got to see who can get them the hardest. <laughs> get them to send a picture you're of their dick back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What could go wrong? Catfishing a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Signorelli just shows up at the door. Hey, Mar, what are you doing? We're trying to get prisoners hard back here. <laughs> Still waiting on that chicken paw, Ma. <laughs> Dude, that would be funny if like we just did like a prank show where we're just fucking with prisoners. <laughs> oh my god. The ultimate little stickers. <laughs> But who will stink the stinkers? <laughs> That's us. Dude, send the impractical jokers to jail. <laughs> <laughs> to prank the little yeah. Oh my god. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. I like this. You're an ideas, man. Dude, I try. You're an awful person for throwing out those letters, but you are you <laughs> are an ideas. All right. Well, you put them in the shredder. 
He's just doing what he was told, like a fucking Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Heinrich Matera. <laughs> Standing in front of cells, eating prisoners' letters. <laughs> this one actually got me pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> dipping, dipping a letter in ranch and just eating it. <laughs> In front of some fucking poor, illiterate white supremacist who hasn't seen his family in three decades. <laughs> Did any of them smell like perfume? Ooh. No, because they're mostly male. Male to male? No, it was like male to... Uh... Oh, so it was the prisoner sending out. Yes, yes. Outbound mail. Oh. Yes, that's, that's why I say it was so sad. Dog. Yeah. It's sad either way. Either direction, it is sad. It'd be weird. We think I'm stopping the families from emailing or <laughs> mailing them. No, it's worse. You almost had mail. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. They just yell out all the names. Here's all the people who almost had mail. <laughs> Sorry if Jake was in the bag with ranch and Dude, when I was He had an extra bottle of ranch, so <laughs> <laughs> And we were out of peanut chips. <laughs> When I was at boot camp at Paris Island in 1999, any time mail came in was like the most exciting point in the fucking week. <laughs> and it, it was it was awesome when you got it, but you were sad when you didn't get it. But then also you started to recognize like, all right, who is not getting any mail whatsoever? And then one day I got mail pretty regularly. And one day I got a package. I don't know how this shit didn't get searched because anytime you got anything that had a little bit of weight to it, the drill instructors made you open it in front of everybody uh, just in case there was, there was contraband in it and they had to take it from you. Like you weren't in trouble for something that somebody what sent would contraband you. be like some fucking cigarettes or fucking, you know, dip or something. Like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah flashlight. What about like snacks? We're not you allowed to get like no. fucking donuts yeah. mailed to you. You could, you couldn't have anything. So what the fuck are you? Could you get mailed to you? Fucking deodorant or something? Yeah. Like that's fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's also a snack for some people. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now you're going to fuck over everybody at boot camp now just for being a fucking rat. <laughs> Damn. Yo, man, we had that fucking deodorant thing unlocked for decades. <laughs> and then one of these little stinkers. <laughs> now we can't eat deodorant in some, boot camp anymore. Some poor recruit's stomach starts growling anytime he hears the Old Spice commercial. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, dude, I, I got a package one day. I used to almost all, all, almost exclusively get letters. Mm -hmm. One day I got a fucking package. By the grace of God, I do not know why my package did not get searched. Dude was and taking I, a killer dump, I bet. Dog, Things he's sitting. Brought, the the senior place, drill instructor is sitting at the head of the squad bay handing oh, out mail. Dog, he's there. The, he's the one that's giving it to you. And we're all just sitting around. Or actually, uh, yeah, we were sitting around that day. Because sometimes they would like hold court and you could like sit down, yeah. crisscross applesauce and just listen to whatever they had to tell you. He's handing out mail. I get my package. I guess he just, you know, I kept my mouth shut and I fucking did what was asked me. So that's probably why I didn't get my shit searched. And this uh. was a couple months in the boot camp. So I probably only had a couple more weeks to go. He hands me this package. He dismisses us to start our evening shower routine. I tear open my package. My boy Brian had mailed me pictures that we had taken. The weekend before I left for fucking boot camp. Yeah. Where me, Brian, and my boy Reed, which is who was like a 65 pound black dude, were posing together, pretending like we were sucking each other's dicks, <laughs> pretending like we were shoving a vacuum up each other's asses, and pretending like we were butt fucking on my friend Steve's couch. <laughs> I kept I kept them in my fucking uh, my Foot Locker until the day I graduated boot camp. And then and you burned them. I, I threw them out the second I got off that fucking base. God damn, you almost fucking got busted, Dog, bro. I cannot imagine like what. One, I know the embarrassment I would have faced. Did you go beat that guy's ass for sending me that stuff? I love a good bit. <laughs> so he I couldn't have stayed mad at him. He could have fried That was your a really ass. good fucking bit, man. <laughs> so like, I I don't know why my shit again searched that day, but. Was that all that was in there? It was like maybe a letter or two. Some fucking KY jelly. <laughs> fucking <a> hamster. <laughs> yeah, Randy, your package is moving. <laughs> you mind opening this in front of the whole fucking team? So, yeah, if Jake was my drill instructor, there's no doubt he would have fucking embarrassed me in front of the whole fucking the whole platoon. <laughs> 
I'm like, I'm keeping these for my private collection. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That was a close one. Yeah. So, yeah, we got to write some murders and see what we can get hard. Yeah. I want to know how the Menendez guys are doing. Knowing that they're never going to come, in, come into pussy ever again. I, dude, I wouldn't doubt that someday they might get out. And it's going to be because of TikTok. <laughs> Bless you. Bless Thank you. you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fucking sixteen-year-old chicks who are fucking leading that charge. That's crazy. It is wild. Just chicks that are fine with blowing your parents' heads off, but not fine with some some verbal abuse. <laughs> Just wanting to be a good tennis, tennis player. Yeah. <laughs> but who knows, man? All right, boys, you ready to wrap it up? Yeah, that was a good one. That was a fun one, man. Ooh. Um, we're going to start writing the murderers. I've signed the both of you up for tennis lessons <laughs> and Jake. I've also signed you up for boot camp. Yeah. So, well, time to take some pictures then. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, would you mind shoving this up your asshole? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bubs. Thanks for tuning in little stinkers. I love you guys. And we'll see you again within a couple of weeks. Bye. Right, thanks guys.